Hello everyone and welcome back to, I think it's our fifth video now, looking at pandas in Python. So same starting code again, I've got my pandas import, so import pandas as PD, I've got my Titanic, which is my CSV file that contains all the data from the Titanic passengers, and I've used pandas to read that in. Then line eight, I'm gonna print that out to make sure it works and make sure it's in the right file directory. There we go, so it looks like I've got the first five and the last five pieces of data. Excellent. Now in this video, what we're gonna look at is getting specific cells. Now to do this, we're gonna use something called lock and I lock, and these are very useful in terms of slicing through data sets. So in the previous videos, we looked at being interested in the names of passengers. that are older than 35, but this time, this specific example is not the same. And that's because I'm just going to bring back the names of the people that are over 35, whereas before it brought back the entire row of data. Now I'm gonna use something called the lock. Now lock uses labels and labels are text basically. So it's gonna use the column headers or the row headers um, or the row text in order to get the right output. So let's have a look at this line of code. I'm gonna create a data frame. I'm gonna call it adult names. I'm gonna assign it from the Titanic data frame and I use the dot lock this time. Now this, we, we've used this, well we've done, we've done this haven't we? With a square brackets. Now what we want is to use the lock. Then I put in there Titanic. I'm gonna put my condition just like we saw in the last video, age is greater than 35. So give me anyone that's older than 35. And the second part here now is this is new, the comma and give me the name. So give me the column or the series that has the header name. And that's the key bit. So when we use lock, it has, you can have two parameters in there. We've got the first bit, which is the condition, and separate by a comma, and the second part is what you actually want to display. So adult underscore names, and let's just print the head out here, just to prove that we can do this. Give that a whirl. And you can see here now that I've got one, six, 11, 13, and 15 of the people that are older than 35 and I've got just the names of those people, nothing else. The index comes as standard anyway, but I've got the names. Now, in this next example, I'm gonna to look to see if I can take and select the rows 10 to 25 and columns three to five. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna to have to use something called the I lock this time. So similar to location, similar to lock up there, but this is now the I lock. Now the I lock is indexed or number based. So before we had labels in speech marks, now we're gonna have numbers if we want to use the I lock. So I'm gonna make a new data frame, sliced DF. And I wanna slice from the Titanic data set I lock, square brackets, and now we need numbers. So I'm gonna say, um, so we want rows 10 to 25, so that's nine, because we start at zero, remember, so the index is zero based. So nine is actually 10, because we start from zero. And then I'm gonna go up to 25. Now remember, it goes up to, but not including 25. And then I've got column three, so zero based index, that would be two and I want two to five, up to, but not including five. Then what we do is I'll just print that out and see what I've got. Print out the whole thing, don't need the head this time. Let's have a look and see if that extracts what we need. And you can see here that starting in position 10, so row 10, 11, 12, all the way down to 24, which is actually 25, because we started at zero, remember? And I'm selecting columns three to five. So that's P class, name, and gender. So that's three to five, three, four, and five. 
And remember, Numbers uses iLock. And what I would suggest is have a play around with that. Try some different parameters in there and see what you get. But don't forget here, these commas are important. We have two parameters. So we're selecting the data and then selecting the columns. So rows first and then columns after. Something else you can do as well is we can, we can um, assign values into the data frame. So what we'll do here is we'll assign the name anonymous to the first three elements of the third column. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to say, take my original data frame called Titanic. I'm going to use a specific location, so number based. And I want to start at the first element, which is zero and go up to, but not including the third element. So that's zero, one, and two. So that's the first three cells. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the third column. I think it's the third column. That's where my data is in the third column. Let me just check zero, one, two, three. Yep. Yeah, name is in the third column. That's why I have co got comma three in there. Then what I'll do is I need to actually give it a value and I'll say equals anonymous, print that out. And all I'll do is I'll use what we did in the last video and I'll just print out the name series. So that's the name column printing out there. Fingers crossed. Uh, and there you can see I've got the first three cells are anonymous now and the next are all as they were before. And that's it. That's a little intro into selecting specific cells using location lock and using I lock there in order to extract data rows and columns from your data frame. In the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to look at how to visually represent all of this data now in a nice way that someone like me can understand.